Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator, and with me is Chairman Tom Wagner. We both co-host this program and every month strive to focus on a different area of responsibility. And we are so pleased <laughs> to have our Finance Director with us today, Wendy Sharnan. Welcome, Wendy. Thank you. Wendy's now been with us, I think, two years? Just a little over two. Just a little over two years. So she has now gone through her second annual budget process. <laughs> and I can't tell you how much I appreciate Wendy's leadership and the role she provides Sheboygan County. She's building a, a strong team in the finance department. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the roles and responsibilities of the finance department and of course our annual budget development process, which is just wrapping up. Mm -hmm. So Wendy, let's start with a, a softball. Oh. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your background. I graduated from Sheboygan uh, North High School. I received my diploma in accounting from Lakeland. I went north though first to, to start working. I worked with the United Tribe as their financial controller. And I moved then to the Brown County. I became their project manager for their financial uh, systems implementation. Believe it or not, when Wendy and I were in grade school for a very short <laughs> period of time, we attended the same grade school in Cleveland. I won't say who's older, but we attended the same grade school in Cleveland for a few months when my parents were transitioning, moving back to the state of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Well, it's wonderful to have you here, and uh, Tom and I have really appreciated the leadership that you and your staff have provided, particularly with the budget development process of late. Please set the stage, share a little bit about the roles and responsibilities of the finance department. In a broad sense, the, the finance department is responsible for the integrity of the financial information. Um, because we're in a centralized type of an operations with the county, this department also is, is handling all the accounts payable, all the accounts receivable, fixed assets, general ledger work. Um, we are in control of the internal control policies and procedures, and that's how we, we, we we, we guide ourselves through the transactions and keeping them uh, the integrity of such. Um, the heavy lifting though for this department really is in the consolidations when we're preparing for the annual audit reports and also in the compilation of the annual budget. Yeah, that is heavy lifting and I'm so thankful that you and your staff do that. The budget development process, which, mm -hmm. you know, let's get right to the meat of things <laughs> here. This is an annual process more or less because mm -hmm. we already start thinking about it in January, February, yes. kick it off in June. But uh, set the stage for our viewers. How does the budget process essentially work or get rolled out and who's all involved? Like you indicated, this is, is almost an entire year long process. Uh, we start in February, uh, the county administrator uh, works with the county chairman in setting the initiatives, uh, setting the goals and objectives. Uh, then I work with the county administrator uh, through March, a little bit into April, where we analyze the impacts, negative and positive, to attending the initiatives that have been set, and also just for sustaining our operations. We have to take all that into effect. Uh, we work collaboratively with the executive committee and the finance committee all through, say, April and May, where the refinement of that budget is, is happening within those committees, along with what you, you're, you're, you're indicating with uh, the chairman. We <clears throat> excuse me, lead ourselves then into the leadership forum where the county board has the opportunity to weigh in on all the initiatives and the preliminary targets that are there. Uh, they have the opportunity to change or challenge anything that's been established. Uh, we also at that leadership forum go through the previous year's performance and, and how we ended up. Uh, it's a very collaborative and it's a very important meeting, I think, and it happens early on in the process. Um, from the leadership, we then go into your nuts and bolts. We go into the kickoff, and the department heads are provided their preliminary targets and, they, and the initiatives that we want them to, to meet. Um, even through this process, then, the department heads are, re are refining even more with their liaison uh, committees uh, prior to the budgets coming to the finance committee, where there is a final approval by the finance committee to introduce that budget to the county board. And you, you said it a couple of times, I think collaboration has really mm -hmm. been the key to our success. By the end of the process, everyone has had an opportunity for input, their fingerprints are on it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of the reasons when we get to the final budget approval, which will happen here on November 7th, that uh, 
folks generally feel pretty good about it. There isn't a lot of angst or discussion gen generally at that last meeting because there was so much throughout the fall. Mm -hmm. Wendy, in your experience, and as you said, you worked for Brown County, you worked for the Oneida, Oneida Tribe of, Oneida Indians. Tribe of Indians prior to that. You mm -hmm. have a lot of background with budget development and financial background. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you put into context our budget process or the approach? What's your impression after now being involved for the last two years? It is the input and the points of input that is provided to the county board. Um, where I was, was coming from, there wasn't a lot of inclusiveness during the entire process, which is a, a key thing here for Sheboygan County is why this budget works so well. It's one of the smoothest processes I've ever been involved with. And I really didn't know how she was going to answer that question. <laughs> Were you a little nervous? No, I wasn't too. Worried. I was feeling pretty good about it too, but yeah. I didn't know. So I'm glad yeah. to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. And obviously, we take pride in our collaborative teamwork here, and, yeah. and I appreciate that. And you've contributed more to it. Well, with that, let me turn it over to Chairman Wagner. Right. Just to comment on that, there obviously is uh, leadership in the different committees and the executive mm -hmm. committee, et cetera. But uh, Top down really doesn't work that well, and we try and involve people at, at all the levels, and I think that ends up the process is, is, is better, and certainly, I, in particular, I think the product is better, which mm -hmm. is really what the goal is. So thank you for being here today, and thank you for uh, being with Sheboygan County. You know, years ago, Sheboygan County experienced like a 5% increase in equalized valuation, mm -hmm. and, and, and that wasn't totally uncommon, and, but more recently, we haven't. And could you talk about how what is equalized valuation and how that affects our, our budget process? Sure. Equalized value is uh, is the basis in which we we use to allocate out the county um, property tax levy. Um, the equalized valuation system is developed by the state, where the state is looking more towards the entirety of a city or the entirety of a township or village to assess and, and, and figure evaluation that is more equitable or more, more um, even for when we distribute the county taxes. Um, equalized value um, then is used to divide against the property tax levy that the county has to establish the, the county tax rate. Um, we are experiencing a 5% increase again this year. Last year though we, we only experienced a 1% increase. Right. And um, that's and obviously very important. And right? please qualify that, qualify that. A 5% increase in equalized value in does equalized not necessarily value. mean a 5% increase in our total levy. That right? is correct. That was the equalized value increase. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Um, we've got, the state has imposed property tax limits mm -hmm. on, on the county. Could you talk about how that affects our budget process and, and what we do? Mm -hmm. There are two ways that the county can increase the property tax and one is through what is called net new construction. Um, in the simplest terms it would be you have a, a construction of a new building and then at the same time you have a demolition of a building and what the calculation is is taking the net effect of, the, of both of those events. Um, with that growth factor that the state is the one that calculates this, with that growth, growth factor is used is the allowable increase that we are able to do with the property tax levy. Um, the second way we're able to increase property taxes is through debt obligation, the debt service obligation, which realistically we, we, do, we don't have a limitation on that part of it. Um, Getting back to a little bit what Adam was talking about, the 2018 property tax rate and the and the levy. You want to talk about that? The property tax rate and the levy. Yes. Um, 2018's property tax uh, levy is, um, I want to say it's an increase of 660000 That's what you're asking right, right I think now. it's 1.38%. 1.38% is our, I, I believe it is. Is the levy increase. The tax rate increase yeah. Correct. The levy increase is 1.38. The net new construction, though, was an increase of 1.72%. Um, there were some reductions that we've seen by uses, use of the sales tax uh, for direct property tax relief and the debt obligations. So. Right. Well, thank you. And the tax rate to follow up on your question sure. levy when is going to go up as proposed 1.38 percent the yes. tax rate is actually coming down it is actually coming down when you see an increase in the equalized value uh, that increase is generally going to relate to a decrease in the tax rate right. and on the county share if it goes up 1.38 doesn't mean each person will see that because it depends on the valuation of their their property they could see a little more than that or a little less than that correct. depending on how their equalized valuation has been for that right. particular year so it's that is correct yeah and depending on whether or not they have a library correct or not. <laughs> another factor correct. yes, yes. 
Uh, the state budget impact on our county budget. Uh, you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, the state impacts us um, with, uh, we, we receive uh, shared revenues from the state. We also receive state aids in, uh, in transportation. We receive, receive state grants in our health and human services area. So anytime the state has any decreases in these areas, it's a direct impact to us and whether or not we're able to sustain the services that we are providing currently. Um, the state also imposes uh, mandated services and not, uh, sometimes they don't, they don't necessarily fully fund these services that they mandate that we provide. Um, or if they do fund it, they'll slowly pull back on that funding and, and transfer that burden to the taxpayers at the local property tax levies. Um, some of the mandated services also are tied to fees that only the state regulates or has the um, control of increasing. And we haven't seen that the revenues are increasing at, at a steady enough rate to offset the expenses that we've been incurring. Right, that is always a, a little bone of contention with local elected officials. Um, and we have a very good relationship with our state legislators who I believe do a good job for Sheboygan County. But unfunded mandates is something that we have yes. to provide that we're not re receiving either the ability to, to, to fund it directly from the state is, is a problem uh, mm -hmm. for counties and other taxing entities, no question about it. Uh, the half percent sales tax, we passed mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, that took effect January 1 of this year. Yes. Uh, could you talk about how that's affected our budget process and, and just the county in general? Well, the sales tax revenues have to be used for transportation capital projects transportation, capital equipment, or for direct property tax relief. Um, so the effect that we've had is that the direct property tax uh, relief, we're using one million in the 2018 budget to reduce or to actually assist with the debt service obligations that we're, we're facing. Um, with the transportation's capital projects no longer needing to be funded through financing, our borrowing is lower, so we will eventually get to a, a trend where our debt service is going to start to come down quite a bit. Yeah, and that'll be a, you don't see that right away, but that'll be a very positive thing for Sheboygan County and, yes. the, and the taxpayers in general. Mm -hmm. Our last question that I have, uh, what are some of the biggest challenges that you face in your position relative to the budget? Et relative to the budget. Um, <laughs> or anything else for that. <laughs> Well, relative to the budget um, forecasting, I can see that it, it, this, the biggest challenge still remains to be able to stay, uh, stay updated with the market with our workforce. Um, uh, just to provide modest increases for our workforce, the net new construction increases aren't, aren't even covering that portion of it. And then we're all facing uh, such increases in the healthcare where we're always facing a gap every time that we're going into a new cycle. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's a good set segue because personnel costs obviously are a big part of our total budget. To summarize, our total budget is, as proposed is about 149 million, and I believe mm -hmm. about 48 million of that is property tax levy. The yes. rest are state uh, resources, federal resources, uh, grants, what have you. So uh, we really keep a close eye on that property tax levy, but. In total, you know, we're upwards of nearly $150 million budget supporting about 207 programs and services. And we have 825 employees who really do excellent work. And to Wendy's point, just providing uh, CPI increases, modest pay increases or absor absorbing health insurance increases mm -hmm. becomes increasingly difficult when you have net new construction increases that aren't enough to even cover that. So a lot of teamwork has gone into streamlining, establishing priorities, consolidating. And I think some of our viewers would be surprised to know just what's happened with our personnel costs over mm -hmm. the last 10 years. Could you touch on that, please, Wendy? Certainly. Our personnel costs, and this would include the fringe benefits, uh, for 2018 is $69.8 million. Uh, back in 2006, that figure was $84.4 million. So through the streamlining and consolidations that have occurred in the county, we've been able to reduce that cost by $14.6 million. So our costs are actually less today than they were 10 years ago. Uh, some folks quickly, when I share that with pe people, quickly say, well, you privatized your nursing homes, Sunny Ridge, mm -hmm. which did have a big impact on that. 
but we were subsidizing our nursing homes to the tune of over six million dollars a year and now we have one health care center rocky knoll which is doing tremendous yes. and the subsidy has been closer to six seven hundred thousand in fact the last couple of years they've come in with essentially a balanced budget without using that subsidy so tremendous progress has been made but i always tell people and chairman wagner certainly knows it as does our finance director nearly every department in the county has made um, enhancements, garnered efficiencies. I think we have about eight or 10 different areas that have been consolidated, mm -hmm. and it's been one of the keys to our success in holding down the property tax levy and keeping those personnel costs down. Right, I would just follow up a little bit, if you don't mind, on, you know, Rocky Knoll has been doing uh, very well financially, and that's really important. But in the, at the end of the day, the most important thing that Rocky Knoll does is provide services Absolutely. to the, uh, the people who are patients there, and, and that's the most critical thing that they've been doing a wonderful job on, in, in my opinion. Also, relative to the, um, you know, our, our difference between our budget and the levy, I think uh, there are some viewers who maybe not be as up to the fact that, you know, uh, we're really an arm of the state government. If you look at our health and human services department, our budget, they really provide so many services that are state mandated. Mm -hmm. uh, also, a simple thing like um, uh, plowing roads in winter, whether it be on the interstate or Highway 23, <clears throat> uh, it is our vehicles that are, are out there because the state of Wisconsin really doesn't do that. They contract with us mm -hmm. to do that and they rely on us to, to keep the roads uh, clear in winter, et cetera. So that's an important part that I think that, that why there is that difference between uh, the main budget and our, our local levy, at, the, at least one of the reasons. Another factor in our budget that Wendy's well aware of because Wendy and her team helped lead that process is our five-year capital planning process mm -hmm. and being sure we're planning for infrastructure improvements. Mm -hmm. A major one's going on at yes at J and 67 with right. our new transportation complex. But Wendy, please touch on that five-year capital plan process and how that impacts the overall budget. Well, the process is um, early on, again, in the budget um, development where the department heads are submitting their, their planned capital projects for the course of five years. Um, some of them are earmarking and they work through their liaison committees and saying that we're, we're believing that this is a need that we have. Now, even though it might not be this year's need, we certainly want to see what that perspective is in five years so that we can plan towards it. Um, this year, uh, we're going to be bonding for $7.1 million to uh, handle our capital projects. But again, this, is, this includes the second phase of the co uh, transportation complex. Um, involved also, our, part of the 7.1 is also the uh, uh, the construction of a garage, a maintenance garage, uh, after we sold the properties on Pennsylvania Avenue, which is going to be further developed, I believe, for um, housing opportunities. Um, we have your normal roof uh, replacements that are needed for the county, and also we're doing some air, con uh, air quality and air conditioning. Uh, fix it. HVAC systems HVAC, yep. and work at the airport. Those runways and tarmacs, that, yes. that takes some real dollars when it comes to an enhancing the airport, though we do get a, right. a strong federal contribution with that as well. Correct. But the five-year plan, I think, has been one of the keys to our success as well because it's thoughtful. We look five years ahead. Just because it's in the plan doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen, but it's part of that due diligence and exploring the opportunity and working with other stakeholders to make sure it makes sense. Right. I agree. It provides a lot of time that you can do the due diligence and, the, and explore the, the possibility of that project. That's why I like to see it in the out years so that that dialogue can start early. You did a nice job earlier describing the, the overall budget development process and mm -hmm. all of the collaboration internally. And you just touched on the five-year capital planning process, which again, a lot of input and collaboration internally. But how does the public get more engaged? How does the public provide input to the overall budget process or just having input on what programs and services are provided? We encourage participation, and there's several ways that um, uh, a constituent can do so. Um, our website has all of the agendas posted and all the liaison contacts that they can reach out and they can see when these budgets are moving through the, the liaison committees, which is their best opportunity because that's right where it's being developed and refined. Um, they're provided another opportunity uh, when we post for the public notice. Uh, the public notice in our public notice meeting 
is going to be next week, Tuesday on Halloween. <laughs> Just sort of landed that way. But they're also then provided the opportunity to come to the county board and, and discuss certain things in that budget that they have questions on or would like to see differently. Um, so there, there are different avenues that they that Every, are available said, to them. Everything's on our website. You yes. can see what's going to be discussed where and when. Uh, Health and Human Services, which is one of our largest departments, providing safety net programs throughout the county, uh, they have their own public hearing where they garner mm -hmm. input on where we can refine programs or perhaps need to do more to uh, help people in need. But frankly, I'd like to see more people attend these. Uh, we really don't get as much public participation as you might hope or want, but certainly the opportunities are there. Mm -hmm. uh, folks just need to get engaged, and, and we welcome that. We encourage that. So next steps, I touched on it briefly, and by the time this is shown to a number of folks, uh, November will be in play, but uh, the two big meetings coming ahead to wrap up the budget process are? They are the public hearing, which will be next week, Tuesday, uh, October 31st. Mm -hmm. Uh, from the hearing, then it will go back to the Finance Committee for final refinement coming from that public hearing. And then the board, it, it comes to the board November 7th for um, approval. The apportionments then are all due by November 15th so that all the municipalities know uh, what that distribution is for the county. Yeah. And then we all take a deep sigh, <laughs> maybe enjoy the moment for a day or two. A day. And, yeah, a day. And, and then, then we prepare for the end of and year. And then start all over again. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an annual process and, yeah. and one that Chairman Wagner and many of our board members have been involved in for a long time. And I'd like to just summarize you know, the track record a little bit. If you haven't been following county government or are newer to the community, uh, Tom Wagner, the former chairman, Roger Distruti, our county board has an excellent fiscal track record. If you look at the last 10 years as a whole, we had five years that we reduced the property tax levy. We had some years where we've had modest increases as proposed this year at 1.38%. But if you look at all 10 years, on average each year, the property tax levy has gone up less than 1%. And there aren't many other units of government at any level that can state that, that have that kind of track record. And when it comes to holding the personnel costs down, I don't think there are many units of government or private sector businesses, frankly, that can say their personnel costs are less today than they were 10, 12 years ago. So we're proud of our collaborative approach. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Thanksgiving in front of us, and, and I tell you, we have a lot to be thankful for in this community. And I'm really thankful to work with a thoughtful county board, a finance director who is as sharp as Wendy is. She's building a great team. And this is an organization that we pr take pride in. We're proud of the collective work that our staff do to help the community be successful. And uh, I really, I, I'm thankful to be in this position and to work with so many good people. And I trust you're thankful as well to, to live and raise your family and, and work in a, in a county like Sheboygan County. So um, thank you for your support. Thank you for following these programs. We talked a little bit about Rocky Knoll a minute ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what a success story that's been. You know, as Tom mentioned, the most important thing that we do there is obviously provide critical care to our residents. Right now, we're busting at the seams. Our census there is as high as it's been in years. We just had a state survey that was outstanding and was a real tribute to our outgoing Rocky Knoll administrator, Rochelle Valeski. I mean, she provided wonderful leadership. Uh, next month, Kayla Clinton's going to be here, our new Rocky Knoll administrator. And not only did she have the chance to work with Rochelle a little bit before she left, boy, has she hit the ground running. So I know you're going to enjoy meeting her. But Wendy, as you have, uh, you think about your staff and how you allocate them, you, you know, you have different accountants that work with different departments mm -hmm. and just help monitor their budgets and making sure they're keeping on track. Just touch on that for a minute or two, or if you would. How is it, or what are your expectations of your staff as they keep tabs on Rocky Knoll and tabs on our transportation department and sheriff's department and just make sure that 
department heads are working within the parameters established by Chairman Wagner and the county board? Well, sure. We have um, an accountant dedicated to Rocky Knoll. Uh, we have an, uh, an accountant dedicated to the sheriff and also to the highway because these are our larger operations. Uh, the accountants are tasked with, with, with monitoring and, and making sure they're communicating with the directors that they see a, a problem coming with a, with a variance possibly that, that they're seeing in, in, in the areas of the appropriations. Um, they also work very closely with the directors when there's a new in initiative they want to develop where then they, they're doing research and, and, and trying to crunch some numbers and statistics for them so that they can make the best uh, decision about that initiative. And what I've really appreciated about you and your team is, you know, some of us, that financial type <laughs> work is not necessarily our strength, you know. And even department heads, we've got a number of strong department heads, but mm -hmm. they really need that assistance as I do with that financial analysis and pulling that all together. And I think you and your staff have done a nice job being able to really boil it down so board members and staff alike can use that information to mm -hmm. make thoughtful, informed decisions. The Finance uh, Committee, you provide uh, routine reports to them. What kind of information does the Finance Committee receive that helps them monitor the budget? We provide a monthly variance report uh, where we're indicating where, the, where possible issues might be arising. Um, I like to say that we really haven't had too many issues arising right. since I've been here, truthfully. Um, we have timing differences, so sometimes when you're looking at it, we identify when there's a timing difference, meaning that we might have the budget there, but we haven't purchased something yet, so you have a, l a little larger variance, but in the end, that variance isn't going to be there. Um, we also provide information on our cash flows and, and the investments and and that's a monthly. And then we also do a quarterly variance reporting to the Finance Committee, which then the department uh, directors are also uh, providing additional detail to any of the variances that they're uh, seeing in the quarterly reports. Yeah. Well, excellent overview. Uh, I hope you have a little better feel and appreciation for the important work of our finance department. Wendy, thank you so much for being here <laughs> You're today. You're welcome. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, next month, Kayla Clinton, our new administrator at Rocky Knoll, is going to be with us. And I know you're going to enjoy hearing more about Rocky Knoll and the good things happening there. As Wendy discussed, our budget process is just about wrapped up. And though we, we are striving to hold the line on property taxes, a modest increase of 1.38% proposed for 2018, even with all that said and done, the board and staff are always looking to new initiatives. And there are some, there are some nice new initiatives in, in the 2018 budget. And one in particular that Chairman Wagner has championed is making sure we're doing more to help people uh, struggling with opioid or heroin addiction. And we've uh, just started a drug court, a treatment center. There's more funding for that. There's more funding for our emergency medical dispatch staff. And have they done a wonderful job with that additional training and providing that additional service? Our transportation com complex is going to complete it, be completed in the year ahead, and that was a huge initiative and investment for our community. And of course, we had the Amsterdam Dunes a number of years ago be purchased, and nearly all those funds have not only been uh, recaptured through grants. Uh, we're looking to establish a mitigation bank for further development, whether it's expending, extending one of our own roads or airports or the private sector looking to expand at Sargento or some other a local company. So good things happening. Thanks for being a part of it. Thanks for joining us. Have a good Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next month. Thank you.